Hello, my name is Fina O'Keefe. I'm from the Division of Neuropsychology, Psychological Society of Ireland. I'm a clinical neuropsychologist and I work in St Vincent's University Hospital in Dublin. I work with people with neurological conditions, including dementias, acquired brain injuries, multiple sclerosis, epilepsies, Parkinson's and other movement disorders. We're all in the middle of a really challenging and uncertain time with COVID-19 having changed so many aspects of our lives over a very, very short space of time. Regardless of whether you have a neurological condition or not, it's really normal that you might feel stressed or anxious or fearful about all the changes and uncertainty that COVID-19 has brought with it. You might feel a fear for your own or other people's health. You might also have feelings of frustration or worry. You might feel irritable or disbelief about what's happening. Some people may find some of the situations unfair. You might be feeling angry about other people's behaviour or sadness and loneliness about the isolation from others. You might have feelings of disgust around contamination or shame about the idea of spreading the virus or guilt about feeling like you're not doing enough or despair about when is it all going to be over. Or you might be feeling a whole mixture of all these feelings. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to feel. How you feel is how you feel and, and that's okay. Everyone's response and reactions is unique and feelings may change day to day or even several times a day. Some people may take all these changes in their stride and others may really, really struggle to cope. If you have a neurological condition, such as an acquired brain injury or dementia or epilepsy or MS or Parkinson's, you may be finding it particularly difficult to process and remember all the information that has been talked about in relation to COVID-19. You might be feeling a real sense of information overload and this might be making it hard for you to be clear about how to follow the guidelines or to keep up with all the changes and updates. With all this extra information to process, it's possible that you might be feeling very fatigued and overwhelmed. With changes and interruptions in your normal daily life, you might be feeling more confused and disoriented than usual. And this might also be making you feel a bit more anxious or worried. Your usual health appointments may be delivered in a different way and you may not be able to access your regular services in the same way as previously. You might be getting used to staying at home and not meeting with your regular healthcare professionals in a face-to-face -face way. Getting used to staying at home without the help of structures and services, activities and routines can be very difficult for people living with long-term neurological conditions and this might make aspects of your emotional or psychological impact of the neurological condition a bit more challenging at the moment. For other people, having less to do, so having more time at home and maybe less to do, might mean that there's more time for worrying or more time for sitting and thinking about your feelings or, or the impact of your condition. Also, if you have some difficulties with memory or planning, you may worry about keeping track of your medication, for example, with all this change in your daily life. Or it's possible that you might have to be getting used to spending a lot more time at home with a lot more people. So there may be children or other adults around um, with a lot more noise and distraction. And this might be particularly challenging for you, particularly if you have a noise sensitivity or if you get irritable or frustrated with um, hustle and bustle. This may add particular strain for um, within the family or it might make some relationships difficult or tense at home. You might also be having questions about your own vulnerability and risk in relation to COVID-19. So for example, if you have MS and you're taking some disease modifying medication, you may be questioning or wondering about the impact of, on, of the medication on your immune system and therefore whether you're more at risk. So taking all these factors into consideration, what might help? Well, at a basic health or medical level, you can make sure that all your medication supply is ordered in advance and speak to your pharmacist by telephone to make a plan for ordering and getting your prescriptions filled. If you have an exacerbation in your symptoms or a seizure, for example, contact your specialist team. So contact that might be your epilepsy nurse or might be your MS nurse specialist or your neurology team or your GP. And it's really, really important that if you are experiencing medical symptoms to get medical assistance. So call your GP 
or if it's an emergency, to get to your local emergency department. Don't delay because of COVID-19. Also, don't make changes to your medication yourself. So if you have concerns, talk to your GP or your neurology team. Also, if you have a phone or virtual or video consult with someone in your healthcare team, you can try and prepare in advance by writing down questions, by making sure you've got a quiet space at the scheduled time, or maybe by asking someone to hear that information with you. And thinking about basic things that might help too. So think practically. So know who's in your support system. Who can you ask for help? So for example, if you need shopping or grocery or medications picked up, there's lots of uh, people that you can ask. You could order online or you could ask family or friends or neighbours to help pick them up for you. There's also local voluntary organisations that might help. So local authorities and councils have set up helplines for vulnerable people in the community where that you can ask for community support such as medication or, or shopping or transport to essential medical appointments. So look into what's available in your area. What might help to process and remember information and guidelines? So get clear and easy to follow summaries from reputable sources. So for example, from the health service uh, executive from the HSE or from an organization that you're linked with. Ask someone that you live with or someone you can speak with by phone to clarify any questions that you have. Keep some information available to you so that you can check it again. Maybe stick it up somewhere so that you can check back if you're finding that you're forgetting the key points. Write down questions that you have for checking when you get to speak to someone, either in person or by phone. You might be feeling a little bit more confused or disoriented at the moment. So you maybe you might find it helpful to check the day or the date every morning. So this might be asking someone that you live with or listening to the radio or TV, writing it down so that you can keep track of the time. Might be helpful to make a checklist every day to keep track of important activities like taking medication ask someone you live with or someone you can speak to by phone to give you regular reminders if that would be helpful for you so what might help to deal with anxiety well think about what's helped before when you were anxious or stressed or fearful what did you do then that was helpful so is there any way you can adapt some of the things that you've found helpful in the past to the current situation? So, for example, you might not be able to go for a walk with a friend because of cocooning or physical distancing, but maybe a call with a supportive friend or family member on the phone might be helpful. So there's some things that we know that people find helpful. In general, when it can feel like there are a lot of things outside of our control, like might be the situation with the COVID-19 crisis, it can help to take control over the things that we do have control over. So starting with our own behaviour, what we do or how we spend our time. So thinking about routine. So keep a normal daily routine as much as possible, adapt to the restrictions and guidelines. So that means getting up, getting dressed, eating meals at your usual time, maintaining a healthy and balanced diet, limit your alcohol intake, limit caffeine or stimulants because this can increase feelings of anxiety and irritability. Thinking about sleep, so try to keep going to sleep at the same time. Not using phones or screens, keeping a notebook beside your bed, maybe to write if worried thoughts, if you find your mind is racing before you go into sleep. Stop and take some slow, deep breaths every now and again. And this helps to manage stress and worry and anxiety in the moment. It activates your frontal lobes and you're likely to feel better able to concentrate and think. So thinking about that relaxation breathing, such as breathing in for a count of four and out for a count of eight. Thinking about connecting and contacting. So it's important that we reach out to others and keep connected. Even if we're physically distant, we can be emotionally close to them by telephone, by Skype, online, video calls, by email and the internet. Try and have conversations with other people daily if possible. So. The other aspect is try and talk about things that might not be about COVID-19. If you are feeling overwhelmed with all the news and all the information, try and avoid over-checking the news. So try to limit your news and social media. Practice being present in the moment. So for some people, they like to practice mindfulness or listen to a brief meditation. Others like to 
activate their senses by maybe noticing what you can see, hear, touch, taste or smell around you. Exercise and keep active in whatever way is possible for you. So walking, stretching or using online home programs such as yoga or fitness classes. Talk to someone about how you're feeling. There's also benefits of connecting with nature and gardening. So it can be really reassuring to notice the evidence of new growth and renewal all around us. If you don't have a garden, it's not so easy, but other options might include planting some seeds or tending to some houseplants or feeding the birds out the window. There's some examples of some other examples of how you might feel at ease at home. They might include eating a nice meal, offering comfort to others, watching your favourite TV show or listening to your favourite music, uh, looking through family pictures or reading a good book or listening to an audiobook or radio. Some people will want to think about how they can feel more useful while staying at home. So that might be thinking about how you feel more energized or creative. So giving you a sense of purpose or achievement or feeling in control. So this might be, some people might like cooking or baking or tidying or cleaning, or again, working in your garden, if you have one, or completing a puzzle or writing a diary or writing a memoir, um, or making a list of things that you're thankful for. So thinking about helpful links, it might be, it's likely that there's help from specific services or organisations that you uh, may be linked with. So, for example, MS Ireland, Epilepsy Ireland, Acquired Brain Injury Ireland, Headway, Irish Heart Foundation, the Irish Wheelchair so Association, Parkinson's Association of Ireland, etc. So the Neurological Alliance of Ireland, NAI.ie, has a list of support organisations for people living with neurological conditions. So you might be able to find some direct helplines or um, online websites there that would be helpful for you. There's other helpful links that you might be able to contact. If you're struggling, for example, there's mentalhealthireland.ie or alone.ie, aware or Samaritans. And there's also wheel.ie, which is community champions and community support. If you're a family member or carer for someone with a neurological condition, this is likely to be an extra challenging time for you also so to remember to look after yourself in all this. Some ways to help the impact of cognitive impairment for the person you are living with might include providing more written or visual prompts. So, for example, a picture of someone hand washing at sinks or frequent reassurance or reorienting about date and day and supporting the person to maintain routine and consistency as far as possible. It might be worth asking the person if they'd like support with any of their virtual or telephone healthcare consults also. Do ask for help from local voluntary services for things like picking up medication or shopping. Also, there's some helpful links for Family Carers too, carealliance.ie and familycarers.ie. Also, Family Carers Ireland have developed an emergency care plan for the current situation where what to do in an emergency if you get unwell. So overall, be kind to yourself. We're being asked to do things very differently right now, and this can be really challenging. But together we can get through this. If you'd like more information about staying well psychologically, please go to www.psychologicalsociety.ie. Thank you.